Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today is a significant feast in the church, Our Lady of the Rosary, formerly known as Our Lady of Victory. The Rosary is believed to have been first presented to St. Dominic in 1214 by Our Lady herself. Yet the event which solidified the devotion as a feast was the Battle of Lepanto, which took place October 7, 1571. At the time, Western Christendom was under siege by the advancing Ottoman Empire. Many believe that a loss of that battle would have led to the fall of the Christian West, including some of the countries from which many of us descend. Pope St. Pius V called for a Holy League, and as the fleet set out to battle, he armed them with another weapon. The Pope called upon all Christians to pray the Rosary for victory, and the battle was won. Stories like this can sometimes make Catholics uncomfortable. What is so meaningful about this set of beads and series of prayers, most of which seem to revolve around that humble young girl from Nazareth? This month of October, dedicated to the Holy Rosary, is a great time to explore how it is that Marian devotion only increases, not decreases, our devotion to Jesus. St. Louis de Montfort wrote, We never give more honor to Jesus than when we honor his mother. How could this be so? We can find a key in Mary's Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. Mary's greatness is not her own. She realized that. Her soul proclaims the greatness of God. She was not preserved from sin on her own accord. Rather, she was given the grace through God, her Savior. That's what we celebrate when we celebrate the Immaculate Conception. And as God has shown favor upon the lowly throughout the ages, here too Mary recognizes that it is only through the loving glance of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, that in her lowliness, generations will call her blessed. This rings clear in the mysteries of the Rosary, where we reflect on the joyful, sorrowful, glorious, and luminous mysteries that ultimately take us deeper into the life, teachings, death, and resurrection of the Lord, of Jesus. When we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, we can ask ourselves, are we too willing to recognize our own lowliness so as to become a joyful, willing vessel for the Lord? As our Christian predecessors did, we can confidently call out in prayer during the battles of life. Yet I am convinced that more miracles of the rosary come not from outward signs of healing or victory, but from the conversions that happen within us as we pray. Now I'd like to ask you, how has praying the rosary impacted your life? Or if you are not yet praying the rosary, why not start? My hunch is that you may find the 15 or so minutes that it takes to devoutly pray the rosary the most valuable 15 minutes you'll spend during your day. You can find the prayers of the rosary on the Archdiocesan website. Our Blessed Mother and the Rosary have been so significant for me throughout my life that I felt particularly blessed when the formal announcement that I was to be made a bishop was made on October 7, 2009, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. For obvious reasons, the feast is even more significant to me these days. It's hard for me to believe that it has been 15 years that I have been a bishop, 15 years where I have felt strongly the presence of Our Blessed Mother. Before I conclude, I'd like to briefly return to our friend, St. Louis de Montfort. He understood so well that honoring Mary meant honoring Jesus, that he composed a method of total consecration to Jesus through Mary. Father Michael Gately composed an adaptation of this in his 33 Days to Morning Glory. Some of you may have completed that consecration to Mary either on your own or in anticipation of our Archdiocese's reconsecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 2017. I encourage you, if you haven't yet, to consider the process of Marian consecration. Confident that when we devote ourselves to Mary, she always points us to her Son, Jesus Christ. May God bless you abundantly this month, and I hope to see many of you in the weeks to come at two key liturgies, the anniversary of the dedication of the cathedral on October 14th, and the Episcopal ordination of our Archdiocese beloved Bishop-elect Kenny on October 28th, both at the Cathedral of St. Paul. Until then, 
I am grateful as always for your prayers, and you remain in my prayers as well. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.